Hey guys, what's going on? Todd Shaw with another episode of the Sawdust Dude. Cool. Today I'm talking to my friends. You know, you're like me, you got that micro shop, 350 square feet or below. Hey, don't be don't don't back away. Don't be shy. Be proud. Let's stand together, united, you know. So you, you got a micro shop, a shed shop, a garage shop, you know. You two car garage guys, you're showing off, you know. <laughs> we all have a common purpose, a common goal. You know, we try to maximize our space. So really, that's what the video is about today is, you know, what about my sanding needs? You know, what do you do for sanders and sanding? Whether it's rough sanding or finished sanding is really kind of two categories. But, you know, I don't have room for a big drum sander. I don't have but hey, here's a biggie. Stick around to the very end because you know what? I got a cool bonus tip for you that I just learned the last couple years and I was like, what? Man, let's get started. Well, probably first and foremost on your list, and uh, this is kind of old school because I kind of had to look around for this. I remember back in the 70s, it's like, I need a belt sander, you know? Hey, Dad, what do you want for Christmas? I need a belt sander and a router, you know? And so, well, here's the belt sander. And uh, real, you know, pretty trigger switch and boom, and off you go. But, you know, hmm. For the shop, I really don't use it that much in the shop. This tool mainly is great for like construction sites. Um, if you've got to do some rough sanding, you got some joists that you want to, this is kind of like a, this or a, just a portable router uh, or a planer, you know, to route down some joists so they're at their level if you're doing decking. Um, that's where a belt sander is really good for aggressively attacking uh, <laughs> some, some, uh, leveling issues uh it's got the belt size right on this is a three inch by 21 inch you just simply pull the trigger on the side and the belts slide off like that they are directional so make sure that you, you got little arrows here make sure you're going the belts in the right way and you know, belt sanders come kind of, kind of like a plane it's great for rough surfaces you got a board that uh you kind of you know scribe it's kind of like got a bow the wall's got a bow and you're sliding up a board to that wall this is great if you take the the end of it and i used to call this like a bull nose and you just kind of run and cut away that wood and so when you just got to fine tune something on the job site make it fit real well and a belt sander comes in really really handy well we're kind of going down the list of you know what really works great in the micro shop and uh, i just pulled out this piece of tool and it's if you see dust flying everywhere <coughs> Yeah, because I use my tools. What can I say? But this is a belt sander and a disc sander combined. Now, these little combo deals are really good for uh, uh, for rough and finished sanding. And as you can see, it doesn't take up a lot of shop space. So it really comes in handy if you just want to have it off to the side and then bring it out on your Craig work table like this and do some sanding. So uh, belt disc, belt disc combo. That's a good choice there for you. Well, here's a cool um, sander that I really, really like. It, you know, it's just, it is kind of a specialty tool that I don't use it a whole lot, but man, when it is a way of working smart and not hard. And this is, and this of course is the oscillating um, spindle sander. And so you have these little cylinders here and uh, you can see on the side here, you have really, pretty thick ones or big ones there all the way down to you know little small tubes that you buy and these are just tubes and you purchase individually so really I'm mean, just changing these out and you just take a loosen that nut up top like that this is a lot so it just slides over like that always put that washer on because what you're trying to do is compress that that rubber sleeve in there and that's what holds the uh, the sanding tube in place. The great thing about it is you have various sizes, and you can create all types of little um, little curves. And don't forget to stick around for our bonus tip at the very end, because I got something that you'll go like, oh, what? How come I didn't know about that? Hey, stick around. I'm gonna show you. So you got a belt sander, you got the belt and this sander, you got that cool oscillating spindle sander, and probably one of my favorite sanders out of my whole 
you know, collection of Sanders. Probably my really favorite good. Sander out of the whole collection is uh, just this, uh, an orbital uh, palm sander. And this does a variable speed. Uh, and it's all, you know, right at your fingertip, the on off button um, and slow or fast. A great sander comes with a little bag here. This sander here uh, does have two, four, six, eight. It does have eight holes in the bottom. You can see that. And it works on a, a, a Velcro kind of thing. And if you go to the store and buy it, it won't say Velcro because Velcro <laughs> is a brand name and they'll call it hook and loop. And you just take your hook and loop sandpaper, uh, line up the holes and uh, kind of like that. Boom, and you're ready for business. Like I said, this is a battery powered version. Uh, I will say this that I've learned over the years, I've got these big uh, DeWalt um, 20 volt max batteries and you can kind of see the difference in the size. When you put this one on the, uh, on the palm sander, it just, it makes that back end kind of heavy because uh, that battery is heavy for this tool. You know, when you use it here, it's not so bad because it's weighted down. But when I use my sander, I like using just the regular size DeWalt batteries. Uh, this is a, a 20 volt battery, 20 volt max. It's cool, it's got the little LED, lets me know how much power I have there. I love these batteries, good long life. Just click and then boom, you're ready to go. As you can see, oh, <coughs> I use my tools. <laughs> this is good for rough sanding and finished sanding. Um, and I like this because, you know, of the hook and loop, and I kind of can change out my pads, but over a period of time that the Velcro or the stickiness kind of loses its ability to hold my pad and it kind of goes flying around, no need to worry. All you have to do is just take your, um, it's just a flathead screwdriver, and it is a special little screw here but uh, a flathead will work. It's some kind of little star combo flathead, but like I said. And all you have to do is just pop that off. You can go online. Uh, it's like Parts Depot or different, different websites, and you can purchase new uh, Velcro pads for this. That's the great thing uh, about quality tools like DeWalt and Milwaukee. Uh, not to exclude other brands, but, you know, uh, I've even purchased uh, tools used because somebody broke something, say a housing, they dropped it or, you know, whatever happened. And you can go online and for, it's just a great deal to buy replacement parts and refurbish a, a used tool. So, you know, if you ever have something to happen to one of your sanders, check into it. But, you know, once again, that's a great thing about when you buy quality tools. But let me show you one of the other tricks, uh, trips, trips, <laughs> one of the other tips I use in the shop. Uh, come check this out. Yeah, over here is where I keep uh, for my, uh, like I said, that's my favorite sander is really that orbital palm sander. And over on this wall, I keep uh, the different sanding pads for it, the disc. And it's just some scrap plywood I had with uh, uh, dowels, and I just you know draw draw a little circle on there, screw some holes, glue them in there, and then just take painter's tape, stick that on there. Oh look, check this out. That's high tech. Yeah, a, a w wooden clothespin that helps keep them on there. So anyway, uh, just another little good tip there how to stay organized uh, with your sanding uses in, in small shops. Hey, so here we go at the bonus tip at the very end. You know, one of the things that when we're sanding, especially with belt sanders or this spindle sander like this, you notice that the, the sawdust kind of gums up the uh, product or it gums up the That's belt. a good example of, of how the belt kind of gets gummed up. And so... All that sawdust gets heated up with the oils and everything, and it kind of clogs up the belt. And so the uh, the aggregate or the the sand particles, what allows the the sanding to actually sand, it becomes ineffective, and it just kind of stops working. Well, here's a great product that you'll want to know about, and it's this. Um, it's just a belt cleaner. And it looks like a giant eraser. Uh, it's kind of real rubbery looking. 
And I purchased this at Woodcraft, uh, but it is a, a belt cleaner. I've seen them for sale at Harbor Freight too. But the, the one at Woodcraft, um, which is kind of like a nationwide um, a woodworking shop, and you know, 13 bucks for this. And it really lasts a long time. And what you do is actually just cut your sander by hand. You see how much it cleaned that, that belt up? <laughs> I mean, this is like sliced bread. Okay, let's just. I just found out about these a couple years ago and I was like, I was at a friend's shop. I was like, what? Man, what in the world? He's like, yeah, and for any kind of um, um, belt sander, uh, if you got even a drum sander, if you guys have big drum sanders in your shop, man, this is the ticket right here. You really extend the life of your uh, of your uh, sanding belts and your sanding disc. I've never used this on an orbital sander yet, but for for my for this spindle sander and for my belt sanders oh my gosh this thing is just such a lifesaver cool deal 13 bucks hey it pays for itself very very quickly saves you money better work cool deal hey better skills better results oh yeah boom well there you go folks i tell you what I'm talking about this micro garage small shed shop folks Appreciate you watching and, uh, you know, hopefully I answered uh, uh, so many questions you might have about, you know, some of your sanding needs and how do other people do it? Well, you know what? Leave a comment below if you got an idea or a little tip that you'd like to pass along. Let's hear about it. But, hey, I appreciate you watching. Hey, thanks for watching another episode of The Sawdust Dude. Oh, yeah. I'll see you real soon.